Welcome to Linux in the Shell episode 26, the Units Command. My name is Dan Washko, and I'll be your host. And as always, I'd like to direct you to the website for the full write-up and the audio that corresponds to this video, as this is just examples of using the Units Command. And, I'll, and I want to sh shout out to Hacker Public Radio for hosting the website and the audio files. And uh, check out Hacker Public Radio for some great content every day. And consider contributing because Hacker Public Radio is a community effort. So let's talk about the units commands. Units allows you to convert between units. It's a really great program, really handy. You start it up by just pressing, uh, typing in units, and it gives you an interactive mode, kind of like BC did, which I spoke about in the last episode. You get some basic information at the top that tells you when the uh, units library or the exchange rates are from, when it was created, that library. Then it tells you how many units are available, how many prefixes, and how many nonlinear units. You see all that there. Then you're prompted for what you have. This is where you enter in your value. I have one, f one feet, one foot. It would probably take one feet, too, but that's just poor grammar. And I want to convert that into inches. The output gives you two lines. One that starts with an asterisk, which is the value you're looking for. There are 12 inches in a foot. And the other one gives you a, a forward slash or division sign, which tells you the inverse, that there are 0 0.08333333 feet in an inch. So that gives you the inverse of the equation that you're looking for. So it's pretty handy. Um, so there are a whole lot of different things that you can put in here. So, for instance, if I would type in 10 feet and go to inches, it would give me the value there. I can go the inverse. How many inches in a foot? Or how many, I have an inch is how many feet is that? And there's kind of the inverse right there you see going back and forth. So if I were to do inches and 10 feet, we get the, uh, the inverse of the equation that we were looking for. Now, if I were to do feet, one foot, and I can hit, and I don't know, you know I want to see what other things I can do. I can hit the question mark and hit enter, and it's going to show me all the possible conversions that it can do with a foot. You could page through these by hitting the space bar and the up and down, you know, space bar. And I don't think it does page up, but it just, it's just kind of using the more pager right there. And you're going to queue. So there's a cool one right there. How many feet do I have? Uh, I have one foot. How many uh, moon radiuses is that? That's very small, but if I choose moon radius, how many feet are in a moon radius? Right there. That's a whole lot of feet. I can do the same thing again. Moon radius. And do... Oop, tells me I don't know what that is. Moon radius and do miles right there. I can do earth radius and do miles. So there's some pretty cool things there. And if you do, you could do tab completion right there uh, on there. And it'll tell you all the different values that it has available to you under that, of course, early Roman foot, earth day. So there's a whole lot of units in here. Before we continue on some more stuff, let's uh, show you how to exit units. You hit Control C, it gets you right out of there. And there are some command line options that you can use. One is units quiet mode, which just brings you up. It tells you the currency exchange rates, and you don't get a prompt, but you can still put in 60 seconds uh, and, and a minute. So right there. So you're not prompted. Then there's um, compact mode, which looks very similar to regular mode so if I do 10 miles and I do feet that just tells me the values return without the asterisk and the slash and no tabbing and then finally we're going to see units 1 which is single line so I'm going to do uh, earth year seconds and that's how many seconds are in the earth year now notice all it showed me was the single return value of one line the asterisk one where you get your conversion and not the inverse all three of those can be coupled using the dash t dash t and so you get quiet compact and single line in the terse or dash t mode so i can put in here 70 liters and those are cups and it converts it into cups and you see right there now terse mode is very handy uh, if you want to use units non-interactively so I would type in units 60 days and that would be 
months. And it would spit it out like that, so I get the, uh, just like I would in, in units regularly, but if I use terse mode, I just get the value I'm looking for right there. 1.97 months in 60 days. So that's, that's pretty handy right there. Now, you got to be careful with units. Let's bring this back up again. One of the first things I wanted to do with units when I got in here was to convert between temperatures. So I started digging around and I was like, okay, I have 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, degrees Fahrenheit. That, that, or degrees Celsius. But I'm going to go short and do degrees Fahrenheit. How many is that in Celsius? That does not look right. Does not look right at all. Why is that? Hmm. Well, that's because the temperature conversion is a nonlinear conversion. There's a different way to do it. And you wouldn't really know by looking in here. You would have to type in temp at temp temp Fahrenheit and in quotation or in parentheses do 212. And then temp Celsius will give you back the value you're looking for, which should be 100. Now, the first value, value uh, degree Fahrenheit to degree Celsius, is actually uh, a, a 200 degree change in Fahrenheit is equivalent to a 117 degree change in Celsius. So just be aware of that. How did I learn that out? Well, I'm going to show you. One more command line switch. Just be ver uh, version information. This line right here shows me the units database. This is a pretty cool file. Okay? Chances are that's where it's going to be located in your system. We can look at that. User share units, definitions.units. And let's go down the degree Celsius. Degree Celsius right there starts talking about some of how degrees Celsius is. Let me see if I can find those. I thought there was another one. It tells you about how the different um, scales are obtained in, in degrees Celsius. Now, if you keep reading through here, eventually it tells you that that value is is kind of like temp Fahrenheit, which they tell you different ways that that's converted and used but in here if you start digging into it it tells you that that those values instead of what you're looking for temp Fahrenheit and temp F and degree Celsius show you the actual change in degrees not not the conversion that you're looking for so just just be aware of that there is a lot of functionality to units that I'm not covering which you can get from the info page, if you do info units, there's a whole great, wonderful documentation. Because just looking at the units definition, you see that there are crazy things in here that you can do. All sorts of stuff. Astronomical values, everything. And you can learn about some of those functions in there by looking at that file. So that's just a quick overview of the units command very handy so I'd say in approximately two weeks I'm going to be doing this again so if I were to say two weeks how many seconds Whoop! that's in approximately a hundred one million two hundred nine thousand six hundred seconds I'll be back doing this again and hopefully you'll be back watching and listening to us. So have a great day. Thank you. This has been Linux in the Shell, episode 26, the units command.